feels like it's been forever. I think it's only been one week. I don't think I missed any last week, so maybe I did. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm here for a Tidy Up Tuesday. So this Tidy Up Tuesday is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to have you following me around while I'm cleaning. I'm going to give you 10 tips to help you keep motivated in cleaning or to keep cleaning interesting if it can be. So these are 10 things that I do that help me um, when it comes time to clean. These are the tips that I use to not be so, oh, it's time to clean. Um, the first thing that I would say, and this isn't one of my tips, this is just a little extra. The first thing that I would say is to be grateful for your home. Be grateful that you have a roof over your head. If you're staying with family, if you're staying with friends, if you're staying, um, you know, in a, you know, not so cute little, you know, one bedroom apartment that's not your dream home, you still have to be grateful because um, it's where you stay safe, it's where you stay dry, and if you have children, it's where your children are safe and dry. So just remember that, and that in itself will keep you motivated to keep it clean because um, you have to be grateful for what you have in order to take care of it. So let's move right on. Um, my first tip is, this is a little unusual, um, to keep everybody's laundry hung in their closet with different colored hangers. Well, let me explain. So um, I have a 16 year old daughter who has some mental illness diagnoses. We're not gonna discuss them, but in her mind, it's hard to make decisions. So if she has all of her clothes in a drawer, chances are that that drawer is gonna be torn apart every morning trying to make a decision. And then I would have to go in and clean up after she went to school. Well, that just doesn't work for me. So what I do is I hang up all of her clothes in her closet. That way, everything is right there. She does not have to dig. She can see everything lined up, and that helps in decision-making with her. So that's a really big tip. If you have a child, or even yourself, have a hard time making decisions, then visual. It's right there in front of you, and you don't have to be frustrated by digging in drawers. So with her, I do hang up pants. The only thing I do not hang up is like, you know, undergarments and night hey, clothes. Oh. Yeah. So I hang up pants, I hang up shirts, I hang up sweaters, I hang it all up. That way she can go in and look. I'll show you her closet. Okay, so this is Selena's closet. Sorry that it's like so super focused in, but her bed's in here. So I can't move her bed. <laughs> so I can't get a full shot of it. But this is what I'm talking about. So, colored hangers. Selena is supposed to have all blue hangers. I see that I've got some black hangers in here. That must have been because I ran out of blue. Um, but generally, she's blue hangers. So that way, when I'm doing laundry, I get all my blue hangers. And I'm going to show you uh, Hannah's closet is peach. And then I'm the velvet black. So I get all my hangers and I just start hanging them up according to whoever's clothes they are. That also helps me when I go to put everything away. So she's got all of her pants hung up, all of her jackets, all of her shirts. So everything is right there and she does not have to dig through any drawers, nothing like that. She's got everything right there and it keeps everything so much cleaner because she's not throwing stuff out of the drawers trying to dig to find one specific pair of pants. So let's move on to Hannah's room. Okay, so this is a much better angle since um, Hannah doesn't have her bed so close to her closet. I can back up a little bit. Okay, so you see those last couple blue hangers? Well, they were sharing blue hangers. That's why I ran out of them. So we are now integrating her clothes with the peach hangers. And she actually does not have pants hung up just because um, it's not really, yeah. It's not really any big deal for her to pick out a pair of pants. So she has hers in her dresser. Pink. <laughs> so that way um, she can just pick out her pants, not a big deal. But um, if you have anybody that needs something visual, definitely go with hanging up the pants also. 
Um, so yeah, that's just all of her jackets, her shirts, her sweaters, all of that. So let's move on to my closet. So here is my closet and I have all the black hangers. Now on Sundays, we do our laundry in my bedroom. So you'll see in my closet that I've also got some peach ones. There's some extra things I need to put where they belong. Some peach ones and some blue ones. So since this is where we do laundry, I just hang all the extras in here and then I can just grab them for the week coming up. I do use hangers to hang up all my pants and leggings. And this is mainly just because me and my husband, we share this black dresser here. And he's got a lot of clothes and I have a lot of night clothes because I really like different night clothes. And so there's really no room for me to hang or to put away all of these jeans and capris and leggings and it would just be too crowded. So I choose to hang mine, which is fine. So it's just a little tip for you. See if you like it. Try it. Um, it's also pleasing to the eye when you come in and everything's color coordinated and it gives you a sense of accomplishment and it looks nice. So if you just want to start out by hanging things and see how you like that and then move on to like I did with different colors for everybody, um, see if that's going to be easier for you. Like I said, when I'm done hanging everything, I just go through the piles, pick out all the peaches or Hannah's. All the blues are Selena's, all the blacks are mine, and then take them to their um, proper home. So try it out, see if it works. So I just looked at my list. I just did number one and number two with you. It was, um, number one was use colored hangers, and number two was hang the clothes for your kids to see. So ha, two. So now I'm on to three. Um, number three, I got my handy dandy list here because we all know my memory is horrible. <laughs> Number three, multi-purpose cleaner. So what I mean is have one cleaner that you can use for everything. And that way, if you need to do like a speedy clean, then you've just got one cleaner. I've been using the multi-purpose um, method in Crisp Apple and I literally can go from my kitchen to my bathroom to my living room using that one product. Um, it's not a great glass cleaner. <laughs> it really isn't. If you have a lot of glass, I would suggest you use the Method um, glass and multi-purpose cleaner. In the mint, it's blue. And that one, if you have like a lot of mirrors and stuff that you just wanna you know, run around and touch up, then I would use that one because the all-purpose cleaner, like I said, in like the grapefruit, and then there's a lime and sea salt that I like, I'm gonna try next. Um, and then, like I said, this crisp apple, it says you can use it to clean glass. Yeah, it says that you can use it on glass. I don't like the way it looks on glass, and I don't like the way it looks on my stainless steel. It was horrible. It looked horrible on my stainless steel. So, wow, that's some crazy hair action going on today. That's all right, though. So, that was number three. One multi-purpose cleaner. That way you can grab it, take it throughout your whole home. Number four, new cleaners. So, my husband doesn't understand why the underside of my sink is completely full with cleaners. Well, he uses, when he cleans, he uses um, either Barkeeper's Friend and Comet I think that's it. And then he'll use a glass cleaner occasionally. It drives me crazy. He doesn't use, he doesn't clean the mirrors or the glass shelving in my daughter's bathroom when he cleans, but what are you gonna do? He's cleaning, okay? So he uses one product and he never gets bored with it and it doesn't smell pretty and whatever. I don't use that because like I know, I hate the way it smells. <laughs> so to keep myself motivated to clean the house, I want it to smell good. So, like I said, my most recent product that I bought was the Method Crisp Apple. Actually, I take that back. That's not the most recent. She has a thousand, like, I do. Like the, um, Different kinds of cleaners. No, the diffusers. She has a thousand. Like, oh yeah, that's down here on the list. Shh, you're giving away secrets. No, Go. Not. So anyway, um, 
No, my most recent purchase actually was Fabuloso in lavender. Um, I forget who I was watching on YouTube. And she said, oh, my husband loves it when I use Fabuloso because the scent is so strong that it lasts. And I was supposed to have company over next weekend. I was supposed to have company over, yeah. So I thought, well, I really want to freshen up the house, so I'll buy some of this Fabuloso. And um, I'm Irish. I'm not Mexican, but I'm allowed to use Fabuloso. <laughs> Apparently the running joke is is that all Spanish moms or something use Fabuloso. Whatever. I love the way it smells. So I know you can get different scents at like the Dollar Tree, but I just put it into a bottle and poured some water in it and I used it to spray the kitchen one day and oh my gosh, it smelled amazing. And um, I've been having a problem with migraines with different scents. Like I went to the vet the other day to take my dog in and they must have used something I don't know what it was, but when I got home, I was in bed. And um, the Fabuloso, even though it's strong, it's not bothering me, so I'm really excited about that. So that's the next one. If you need to get motivated, go and buy yourself a new cleaner and a different scent. I mean, for $4, if you buy, you know, $4, even like $3, buy a, th a new thing of method. Go to the dollar store. The dollar store has different scented cleaners. Go buy something from there. And honestly, like it'll get you motivated to clean the house because you want your house to smell clean. So um, next one, disposable cups and bowls. Now I know this is going to be like all, oh, those are bad for the environment. And I've said before, I really do care about the environment. I care about the earth and I think that everybody should be earth friendly. However, we are all trying to do this thing called life. And sometimes we have to decide what is going to get us through the day. So if you have a whole bunch of cups and bowls that end up in somebody's room, yeah, teach the kid not to do that. That is the simple answer. Okay. Well, in real world, sometimes we just do things that make our life a little easier. So, we use disposable cups, bowls, and paper plates. And that way, when we do have to do a clean out of one of the kids' bedrooms, we throw it all away. And it is just one less thing that I have to deal with. If we have to have a whole uh, cupboard full of missing cups, that's gonna drive me crazy. If we have to have a whole cupboard full of missing plates, that's gonna drive me nuts. And then by the time you get to them, God only knows how long the food's been sitting on there. And I'm talking days. I'm not talking like hoarding material like months or years. No, I'm talking days. Um, but the point is, is that you have to do what is gonna benefit you and your family. And if paper plates, paper cups, and paper bowls save your sanity, use them because they save mine. So if that's something that you have a tug of war going on in your home about people taking, you know, things into their room and then not bringing them right back out, then go ahead, just use it. So again, parenting advice would be teach your kids not to. Real world, right here. No. All right, new decor. Okay, new decor. So don't go out to Kohl's and spend $300 because you want to keep your home clean. That's silly. That's ridiculous. It's just going to add to the mess. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about going and spending a huge amount of money to bring all this crap into your house that you have to keep up with. So I like to stay minimal as far as not putting too much on the walls, not having too much stuff on tabletops, countertops. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm a minimalist, minimalist by any means because I do have quite a few things, but I like to keep it as minimal as possible. Um, but what I mean new decor is that if your living room just, you, you dread cleaning it because it doesn't even look pretty afterwards. Oh, I'm doing the Joey quotes again pretty afterwards, then um, you might wanna think about getting some stuff and putting it on the walls. So let me show you real quick my living room. Okay, so this is the living room. Don't mind our breakfast out. Um, 
so let me just tell you, these walls are huge because it's a vaulted ceiling. So I was so confused about what I needed to do. These two little rattan things up there, I got those at a consignment shop. I think they ended up being like 40 cents a piece because they were on clearance. The joy and the love sign, Dollar Tree. The two mirrors, Dollar Tree. The home sweet home, Dollar Tree. And that little heart over there, Dollar Tree. So even though the Dollar Tree has some pretty uh, tacky stuff, you can also find some stuff that's gonna fit in and you're not spending a ton of money. This piece over here, life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. It is, let me show you that. It is, I believe, two Dollar Tree signs that are put together. Let me see the best way to do this. All right, hold on. I gotta find a way to do this. Two Dollar Tree signs that I glued together and painted on the back of. Yeah, they're Christmas, they're Santa Claus. So, that is my $2 wooden sign that I would say looks pretty darn good. All I did was just use some brown and black and streaked it up to make it look like wood and then wrote on it. So that's what I mean when I say new decor. Go out and get yourself one piece of decor, whether it be from the Dollar Tree or whatever, and it's gonna make you enjoy that area to where you wanna keep it clean. So that's, that's that tip. Um, dollar store bins. If you guys watched my pantry makeover, you know, love me some dollar store bins, especially white ones. They're my favorite. Um, so if you feel like, you know, under the kitchen counters is getting out of control or um, under the bathroom counters, pantry, pantry I redid with dollar store bins. So go out and grab you some dollar store bins. It will give you that satisfaction after you get done cleaning of everything being crisp and done. And um, it'll just keep you motivated to keep that area clean. All right, we're on to number eight. Number eight is essential oil diffusers and candles. That's where Hannah was I going. I brought it in. <laughs> That's what Hannah was saying. Okay, I only have two essential oil diffusers. I'm looking to get another one. I tried yesterday to look at Kmart? Kmart, yeah. Yeah, right. They don't have anything over there. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you've seen that we live like way out in the middle of nowhere. We don't get a Walmart. We don't get a Target. Are you okay? Yeah. Did you fall? No. Oh, okay. Um, we don't have a Walmart. We don't have a Target. We don't have any big box stores at all because we have a law in our county that no big box stores are allowed to come in here. So the only thing we have is Kmart and I'm sorry, but they suck as far as their choices and things go. There's very minimal home decor. There's very minimal like items that I use, essential oils in itself. I have to go to the GNC and spend like a million dollars. So anyway, off that rant. Anyway, that is another idea to keep, um... oh, you banged your tail. I'm sorry, boo-boo. That's another idea to keep um, motivated in keeping your home clean is because if it smells fresh, you're gonna wanna keep it looking good. And so before you get started, go around, light some candles, put on your essential oil diffusers, and that will set the mood. Almost like, you know, you have to set the mood to go to sleep, you have to set the mood to study. You know, that's gonna set the mood to cleaning your home. And that's just the way that I begin every cleaning routine is that I will go around and make it smell good in the house. We're on number nine, time of day that is best for you. This is so important. Right now, if you looked at my house, you would think, holy crap, that woman's house is like a chaotic mess. It is, because it is 11.55, which by the way, I'm taping this the Monday after time change, so we didn't even get up this morning until 9.30. Lazy butts. Um, yeah. Yeah, and she didn't have to get to school this morning because there was no Latin today. So I usually go to school at 9.40, we leave the house, yeah. So anyway, the point is that I don't like to clean in the morning. Morning for me is like homeschool, 
running around doing errands, um, lounging, reading a book, um, just kind of taking it easy. And I enjoy my coffee. I enjoy relaxing in the morning. Um, because we usually go until 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. That's what time Hannah usually goes to bed is 9, 30 or 10 o'clock because again, she's homeschooled. She doesn't have to get up early. So even if I'm up at 6.30 in the morning, that's not the time that I like get everything done and clean. I like to get everything done later in the day. So you'll see me probably between three or four um, say, okay, time to get the house tidy. And that's when I get up and I do the dishes and I make the beds and you know, uh, if the carpets need to be vacuumed, I'll vacuum, clean up the, you know, the counters, go into the bathrooms, make sure those are tidied up. Um, put all the dirty laundry together, bring it into the um, laundry area. So that's the time of day that's best for me to clean. So you have to pick your time of day. Hannah just had to bring it to my attention that the dog tooted and she did, and it's really gross. And she has to lay right next to us while she does it too. Anyway. So you have to pick your time of day that is best for you to clean. If you are the type of person who gets up at six o'clock in the morning and you are like, I gotta go now, then do it at six o'clock in the morning. Or if you have to go to work and you get up and take your shower and you get your cup of coffee in and you're like, okay, I gotta get my stuff done, do it then, go for it. Um, load your dishwasher, straighten up your bathrooms, whatever you gotta do, go ahead and do it then. But again, I enjoy my mornings to be a little bit more relaxing and homeschool and you know errands run around like that and then do everything in the afternoon so pick your time of day sorry that's pencil sharpener sorry. that's all right number 10 this is my biggest one invite someone over <laughs> so if you really don't feel like cleaning your house invite somebody over you'll clean your house <laughs> so um, on Saturday it was Little Thing's birthday back there, and we just kind of hung out because we're not having our party until next weekend. And um, my husband's brother had called and said, oh, well, I thought we were coming over tonight. And he said, no, dude, it's next Saturday. And he said, oh, well, I think we were gonna be coming over. And he's like, you guys can still come over if you want. Hey, it was like 5.30. The house looked horrible. <laughs> I was like, what? What did you just do that for? He's like, well, I don't know, we can hang out. I'm like, yeah, I guess, okay. So me and my husband, we tag team the house and I'm not kidding you, we were done in like 30 minutes. So my oldest daughter Gabrielle was over with some friends and they went out to get ice cream. And so when they left, the house was still trashed. And then when they came back, her friend was like, man, y'all clean this place. <laughs> so invite somebody over, it will get done. I literally ran through the house with my Fabuloso because it smelled so good. And I sprayed every surface, I just put everything away um, my husband came in here, loaded the dishwasher really quick. I sprayed the counters. He ran a vacuum through the house and did the couch cushions. And that was it. Like we were done. The house was clean in literally like 20, 30 minutes. Um, we still had to, on Sunday, he still like scrubbed the showers and I still have one more shower to do. But as far as like surface, it was clean. So we were pretty happy with that. Um, so those are my 10 tips. If you guys have any tips, let me know. I always find ways to motivate myself. Some people are like, oh, I love cleaning. I hate cleaning. I don't like cleaning. And I love having a clean house. So what do you do? You know, if you love having a clean house, but you don't like cleaning, you better come up with some creative ways to get that house clean every day. So if you have tips, let me know. What's your favorite tip? Um, leave it in the box below and I will see you next time. Take care guys. Mm -hmm.